first big change from the first draft is the Maokai taken away from life. All right, so Maokai off of the table, that sort of instant engage option. And with Nautilus banned as well, he starts to run low on Senna combos. Obviously, the Tarm Kench still open and available. And I feel like FBX are almost forced to pick that. But then again, we've seen this Horn <laughs> as, a, as a support locking in a couple of times. I think we've seen it twice so far in the LPL, to my memory. Most recently, Ming playing that, and I believe it was RA that grabbed it before RNG. There we go, the Nico for yep. care as well. It is going to be pure scaling from the bottom side, though, of FBX. But it's a very similar archetype to the Maokai with the Senna because it is an engaged tank from the support role, but just got the full goal from the bot lane. It's something that we see a lot more in the LCK. I think Beryl played a load of it. I'm trying to remember if Carrier played a game of it too. Doc Diamond Life, of course, coming in from the LCK this year, carrying on um, a lot of that similar champion pool and some of the styles the of play. Carrying the torch a little bit, you know? They've not really kind of like given up entirely in their entity. They've not been subsumed by the madness of the LTL just yet. But what this means is yeah. that you still have um, very, very long range engage, and then you also have care being able to follow up on a flank as well. With Varus being locked in, um, you've still got the huge issue of where does Varus stand in these team fights. The Lee Sin is banned away this time in the second round of bans. I'm very surprised that got let through in the first game, given how good Milky Way is on that champion and how well he ended up playing with it. Now Milky Way needs to find something else that can actually threaten the back line. It's going to be harder to do so now. I mean, this cop from NIP. Almost the exact same as the previous game. Obviously, you've got the Maokai instead of the Rel, but carries are the same, jungler the same. The Graves, though, up for Milky Way if he does want to go for that carry once more. One minor issue you might have is the Varus and the Oriana. You could struggle to get in range if NIP play the point. Well, we'll have to wait and see. As, uh, yeah, only time will tell how it fixes. I, I, never, I never know what to do <laughs> when I'm going into an FPX game. Like, normal, like, trying to break down we the draft, I feel like usually We leave our preconceived notions fine, at the door. We just it, leave it there. <laughs> it, it's just broken my brain. This team has broken my brain. And do you know what? I love every second of it. Uh, the thing about the Graves is that in a game like this, when you have the Senna, the Orn, and the Nico all all inning, you don't actually need to get into melee range like the Graves sometimes kind of has to do. You just have to throw your ult over the top with the Lethality build. You have the Cassante, so it's not going to be um, the top lane split pusher, but it is going to be double front line with then huge range of the Graves ult and then the Senna ult as well, hopefully being able to zero out the, the quite static carries of Rookie Zoriana, Photix, uh, Varus as well. Shanji, he's going to lock in a tank answer on the other side to help some of that frontlining potential. It kind of feels, though, like NIP have walked into a bit of a difficult team fight in its own way, though. Two static carries versus Orn, Graves, and Senna ults is really, really quite awkward. If Care ever gets a flank, that's going to be a bit of a mess. I think the bonus they do have, though, is that Milky Way doesn't have the same early gank pressure or the ability to potentially, you know, counter gank in the same way. If Aki has a good Shin Sao performance, he can maybe start to snowball one of these lanes into Oblivion and hopefully allow an IP to break open a gold advantage. I'll have to see how it's going to go. The one big difference between this game and the previous game is the top lane matchup, right? Shanji last game having the Cassante this time be in the hands of Shaolau who now, you know, ordinarily I'd be like, yeah, Cassante on our side, that's good. Like, you, you're usually very positively looking at the Cassante. But the fact that Shaolau, who can't really go for that split push style on this Cassante, he's going to have to join the team a lot more. So we will have a more, or I expect, we'll have a more, like, quote unquote, standard game of League of Legends here from FPX. Which, you know, so whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I'll leave that up to you guys to decide ourselves into this second game. I'm just trying to puzzle out how NIP find themselves uh, in this game, really, because I don't think they have easy win conditions themselves. It looks like they picked a team fight by composition, but it feels like it's going to be quite hard to play against the ultimates. I think a lot of it hinges on this early game. Get a big enough gold lead that you don't have to worry about these ults. So we go on to the rift. Here we go. Game number two of the series. FPX versus NIP. And so far... Giles! Oh. Right, scattered and chaotic, but Gyo's nonetheless. We'll take it. There's FPX here in NIP's own arena in Suzhou. And yet some of the fans there holding up the Dokdom signs. Definitely some FPX fans in that audience, that's for sure. An exciting time to be an FPX fan right now. 
I wonder if there are any FX fans left over from 2019 that are now reaping the rewards of that faith because, oh man, my goodness, what a roster to be a fan of. No, FX, they were, they were one of those, um, you know, it was a strange team to support because I think that when they ended up winning their world championship, it was after a couple of years of building towards that, particularly with the likes of Doonby building up a reputation for himself and then finally cresting towards that real pinnacle of league. Um, they really didn't have an easy time after that point, though. They had one of the largest falls from grace of uh, one of our champion organizations. And it did kind of feel like this kind of roster in the last kind of era was one of a real try and go back to grassroots, try and find out a way to rebuild from bedrock. This is the first time that we've really started to see that come to fruition, though. They've tried that a couple of times. Now with Milky Way, this guy in the jungle, how much can we talk about him? It turns out quite a lot. He's been a big part of how this team is playing alongside some of the slightly older rookies, I suppose, Shallow, yeah. who's kind of still in that bracket. They started to build something really good for themselves. I will say this, like, oh, hang on, uh. is Shallow who about to die? <laughs> okay, he's fine, he's alive. Uh, just on the topic of FPX and their history, I do just want to, like, kind of remind everyone, because I feel like there was, a, there was a year that just got forgotten about, like, 2021, FPX did look really good. So 2019, you know, won the World Championship. Uh, 2020 then kind of plummeted to some extent. Then 2021, yeah. they actually finished in second place in both splits in the LPL. And then, well, in, in, in playoffs, sorry, they actually finished first place in the summer split um, before playoffs. And then at Worlds, you know, went a little yeah. bit pear-shaped, finished. <laughs> You know, 14th to 16th. It's not an ideal finish for the second seed of LPL, I've is it? I've heard of better and finishes. I, and I feel like that world's result kind of erased what was done that year by FPX. You know, there was a lot of debate on whether they'd always been frauds, you know, that entire year. But the second place finish is still fantastic. The do and B performance, I especially remember his lease in that year, was absolutely incredible. So it's definitely been an organization that has had peaks and troughs you know like 2019 massive peak trough in 2020 2021 back up to a peak and then the last couple of years it's been a pretty sizable trough perhaps this is the moment again for them to start peaking again as an organization but nip will be the stumbling block for them or at least they'll try to be the stumbling block yeah. as aki on this top side Milky Way, a level up on him, but Rookie's moving over. Milky Way's got to get out of dodge on this one. Flash for flash between the junglers, but Aki has overcommitted to the play. He's overshown his hand, but no! Aki's the one to get first blood, and Care just about walks away with his life. Milky Way just about misjudges where Aki is on the map. The re-engage then afterwards, so, so close, but Aki on the Shin South comes out. Ahead of that play, he's going to get himself the top side scuttle. He can maybe go towards the bot side scuttle as well. I don't think actually he's going to get there in time. The recall, uh, the reset from Milky Way going to be fine after that point. What did we say coming out of this draft? NIP might be some difficult team fights ahead for them. But if they can get an early game advantage, if Aki can have a good early game, then things are probably going to be okay for them. A kill like that, a first blood, is a good start. <laughs> Milky Way just runs straight from the Nexus to the mid lane here to try and answer the play. That's a flash from Rookie. Yeah. So, you know, you may have lost the gold in terms of the kill, but you've got both flashes out. Maybe that can lead to something. So Milky Way obviously lost track of where Aki was, maybe trying to punish Rookie walking up towards that mid lane. Um, and it's a, you know, it's a very close run thing. Great early burst. He has the fleet footwork to give him a little bit of disengage. Aki's cooldowns just about come back up, though to punish him. The gank after is actually what I was really interested in. Because I think what happened was Aki thought that oh, bot-side no. scuttle would be just... Oh, the knockback! Oh my god, it's a disaster for Shang-Chi! Shao what is that shield? What, what the hell is that shield? Shang-Chi just went from 1 HP to 300 in half a second. Oh god, stop. The... We've got to stop talking about all this jungle pathing. Oh. Flash and mid lane's already gone. And follow up Rue as well. Dumptum's here and Care takes down Rookie. This team does not know how to play slow. FPX just has to be going full forward all the time. This team has been so exciting to watch as they get a kill back in that mid lane. It goes over to Care. It goes against Rookie, who in the last game struggled a little bit despite his, you know, talking up his Oriana. It was a hard game for it. And now in the second game, he's not necessarily on the best for early start. You know what? I pledge allegiance to FBX at this <laughs> point. Like, they are bringing the LPL back to the LPL. They go forwards, they make plays happen, they look for fights, and they're not interested in scaling. I am all aboard for this kind of gameplay. Really exciting top lane matchup so far. Really exciting mid-jungle 2v2. I love the roam from Dokdom as well. 
to make presence happen in this mid lane. Now, three grubs taken by NIP. An opportunity off the back of Milky Way clearing down towards this bottom side. So Cad just uh, threw out his flash for the kill in mid lane. Um, last game, Rookie came to a huge CS advantage, but it feels like with all the jungle intervention, he's not really been left alone in an isolated 1v1. He's not been allowed that. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, Dogtime and Life farming up pretty okay, considering that they're against a virus. Yeah, yeah. Life is actually up in CS. How often do you see the farming support um, out CSing the enemy AD carry? Uh, not often, Joe. Not often. I was sat there thinking, huh, let's look at the combined CS. No, that's not any better. It is just Dogtime and Life getting great value out of this. That's a big problem, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Remember last game where life literally 1v1 voted? Yeah. <laughs> life is the better AD carry in this matchup. And he's playing all. Like, what like, is going on? Right, is Doc down the best AD carry in this game? Mate, he's not even the best AD carry on his team. <laughs> I know, technically, the, def the definitions get a little bit strange when you're playing like the Maokai, like the Maokais and the Orns instead. But like, we're going to count it because it's funny, I guess. Dragon at least goes over to NIP. That's a bonus for them. Um, doesn't really help them losing this bot lane, though. This has been such a great series. I'm loving every second. It takes me back, you know. It yeah. kind of helps me forget how slow this split has been so far. Cannon taken. You can see Milky Way has slipped into the bottom side. Flash for the ult, but Fotic is faster. Gets his own flash off as well. Nice try from FPX, but great response from Fotic. Damn, that is some quick reactions from Fotic. Probably uh, too wise that combo now. I think it was Broken Blade that really popularized that in the LEC. I can't really remember who started doing it first in the LPL and LCK, but that combo is so nasty to try and flash away from. Important that they survive, though. Would have been a load of plates going over the other side as well. And then we come back out onto the map. NIP need to be uh, less worried about that Ornolt coming through, but the next time it comes up, wait for FPX to return back to the scene of that crime. We'll certainly have to. Two plates taken in the top side, it's worth mentioning, for Shanji. Not building a massive CS lead just yet. Shalahu doing a good job of staying even. Often you can see Udyrs managing to find CS leads in this kind of matchup as All Out actually comes through. Uh, here comes Doctum. From Shalahu. Doctum's roamed up to the top side. The healing comes up through, but maybe Shanji can get a kill anyway. Shalahu's so low on HP. It's Shanji. 2v1s him. Looks for a little bit more as well. Doctum low on HP, but Care has moved over. They need all three to make it happen. Shanji is off the chain in this game. Yeah, had a bit of a difficult game one. He was sat there looking at Shalahu at zero and four and goes, huh, still can't really do much about that one. This game though, he's trying to keep mad, take matters into his own hands by a bit of an advantage for NIP on the top side of the map. But how the heck does this start? You can see that there's a level disadvantage at the start of this play for Shalahu, but he does have the all out. Doesn't necessarily matter that he's at a lower HP. It's a lot of damage. All he's doing really is trying to buy some extra damage and time for his members to walk up. That route missing, that's the key. Next to the ghost and the movement speed from Udyr's kit. Make it so hard to land some of these skill shots even early into the game. Dogdam just about picks up the kill at least. I'm pretty sure Shanji gets away with that as well if Care didn't roam up to shut him down. I don't think he could have got the kill. He couldn't have dived onto Doctum, but at the very least could have got away. meddling kids. I don't know. <laughs> the fact that you need three people to shut this Udyr down. This was the Kisante picked first. Care, Pop Blossom onto two. The rail got across as well. Aki's just eviscerated. Joel will be next to ball as Care walks away with his life. And suddenly Shanji doesn't like the odds in this one. And the root hits this time. The shotgun is mightier than the man bear pig as Milky Way just about gets away with it. And FBX find yet another fight. And while this is happening, you know, bot side is alone in a 1v1, but it's not even like Fotic can really stop the Orn from farming or get access to turret. Life has ult if he wants to stop Fotic getting towards that tower. So NIP, they are losing everything across the map right now. Shanji, very strong on this Uda and very obnoxious. We talk about that for, for all day, but once you get everyone involved, the big ults from FPX are the big advantage here. The Orianna is in a similar state to the last game. It's hard to really force a clumped up ult and get huge value out of that. And you don't have the rel this time to force everyone into a big clump. It means that FPX, they can throw out the big ults first and once they're down, they really can just run forward and end the fight. Worth mentioning as well that Milky Way able to get his ult off before Aki could use the Crescent Guard. So getting that long range damage in. 5-2 to on the scoreboard. 2,000 gold lead for FBX. And I want to give credit here to Doctum, right? Doctum 
He's an AD carry player, and he's playing the support role extremely well here. The roaming coming out from him is fantastic to see, and it's something that, honestly, you don't see many AD carries, especially in the LPL, actually having that great of a grasp on when you can roam on this center and yeah. when you can impactfully like hit the rest of the map. Doctum giving us a masterclass today. So that's a really good point because I was just thinking of a couple of other teams which have shown this as well. Invictus Gaming also showed a similar style, and we've also seen this from Dogtown on the center before this as well, where sometimes when there is a top lane matchup which isn't necessarily going your way, you can also just shift the center towards top side, leave your uh, support, whether it's the Maokai or the Orn in this case as well, to safely farm as long as they are okay to do so. And you can start flipping matchups all across the map, although Dogtown, you've got to be careful of Fog of War. You certainly do. Force to flash. Not the end of the world for him, but no, looking towards that next team fight, Rookie Shockwave, <laughs> so if he can find it onto the center, could be devastating. First strike did go to NIP, and the next one's spawning. I don't know why that why you just said that, Force to Flash. It reminds me of those memes of, like, Born to Ghosts, Force to Flash. <laughs> I don't know why, it just made me laugh. Vine's just in a weird place today. Dragon's coming up, important stuff. Right, NIP, they could get themselves a second Dragon if they do secure this one. Big ults back up and available, though, from FPX. NIP, they need a better Crescent Guard from Aki in this next fight to actually hold the door shut and deny those big ultimates value, but they're not into River just yet, and that makes things really, really difficult. I'm not sure you can fight this, honestly, as NIP. The Railgun comes through. This long-range damage combo. It's only life that really needs to commit to the fight. And FBX still get the kill. Yeah, Shanji's oh. walking out. He's popped his ghost. This is super speed. Shanji is just charging at FBX as Care will go down. He sacrifices himself. He doesn't even use the Pop Blossom as life. He's trying to push the wave in. I think perhaps overzealous there. Maybe could have got away with Care's sacrifice. I think Shanji's activated the secret extra stance of Udyr. It's the Hedgehog stance. stance. He goes absolutely sonic and goes smashing into the backline. Feels like FPX, they over-aggressed just a little too much. Used a couple too many of their ultimates. You can see how the combo wants to work. And NIP, they are going to force some... They're going to have some issues with that later into the game because it feels like when you have so much gold now onto the Lethality Graves, that will that ultimate alone can really change things. But that could be a shockwave to kill him right now. The shockwave actually pulls Milky Way closer towards the tower. And now... TP in from life as well. Are they going to commit to this one? There's the knockup. There's the brittle proc. But Dogdom, no ultimate available. They can't finish the kill. On to draw. Incredibly close run game here. It's still a 3,000 gold lead right now. And Rookie forced to flash. A bit of a weird one, honestly. Yeah, Kerr was uh, hiding a little bit there and manages to force out the flash all the same. Rookie. He's not had an e easy game. It's been a hard game for an Orianna. I think he's played it okay. It's just a hard draft to play towards. These big ults, though, from FPX, this is what we were worried about with this composition. NIP, they need a huge gold lead. They need to make sure that FPX can never be in position to really, truly use these big teamfight ults. Luckily, in this case, FPX do actually overstay a little bit. They go a little too far into enemy territory. And after their big ults are down, they can't really turn the tables. It's a good punish from NIP. You need to find some ways to really get past this big, big R button comp. Yeah, to be fair to Life, I criticized him taking the wave. I'm not sure he could have got away. Shanji had already started to move over, so he just managed to at least get a minion wave out of that one. NIP, though, two Drakes now off the back of all of that action and looking towards a Herald as well. In the meantime, FX grouped up mid, and it's Care playing opposite, looking for a tier one tower in the bottom side, but FX moving over towards this Herald to contest. This is 4v5, but Care has the teleport available doesn't have any great wards to get to you can maybe teleport to the pink ward top side of river he's going straight into the middle he has flash here come the ults here we go on horn called and the all out pulls the jungler out of the play it's smited it's taken down the pop blossom just a space away from shanji and the root hits him the q3 hits him and it's a double for shaolau who fbx this is gorgeous I love these compositions which FPX are playing. They show that they understand how their comps work. Now, sometimes they're pretty easy. You press your alt button, you sometimes just win. NIP, they line up towards the Herald. They get to it first, but they can't, they can't really secure the fight afterwards. And FPX, with the amount of gold they're getting, with a composition which scales really, really well, I'm getting really worried that NIP are going to be facing a 0-2, despite being the 7-1 team heading into this series. 
FBX, this is the start of a gauntlet for them. They faced top eSwaps, they beat them, they've got NIP here, and with fights like this, they're looking to close out this series and set themselves up for real success. They get, once again, this big wombo combo coming out, force someone down very early into the play, and despite the big shockwave coming through for once, actually, in this last couple of games, it's not enough because the other ults on the other side of the map have meant more. So far, an incredible performance from FPX. And, you know, we talked, like you're saying, you know, the gauntlet begins for NIP. This is a team that have shown weakness. Even though they're 7-1 in the standings, they've gone to three games in a lot of series. And against teams that are massively underperforming, like LNG, going to three games is not a particularly good look. These series wins for NIP have not been particularly clean. And FPX have been sort of the, the underdog rookie story here of the LPL. When I said that they were going to put pressure on, I was sort of saying it, hopefully. But it is feeling like that story might just come true here as Doctum steps very far forwards. Joel tries to punish, but Doctum gets out of dodge. The horn horn sounds, and Joel takes a good chunk for his trouble. Aki trying to get damage down onto this Cassante, and NIP do dissuade the play. NIP a little bit over aggressive in that mid lane, but they just about force out the flash from Doctum. <laughs> It's dangerous thing to do. That was a full combo from Garrett. It barely broke the shield. Sorry, yeah, I guess I was like, no, it's completely fine. It's actually a little bit concerning though. Like, huh, yeah, that's a bit awkward. Because he's not even built up any magic resist, by the way. Now, the thing is, not everyone at NIP is as tanky as Shanji is. And that's the big problem. If it goes on to Rookie, Fosa could even draw at this point, really. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't manage to stop that recall there. Then things get to be pretty problematic. Milky Way and Shallow, who on the other side, they can also be frontline, they can also be backline access. And as the dragon's coming up in the next minute or so, NIP, they will need to once again ask themselves the question, how the hell do we deal with these big ultimates from FPX? And I just love that we're seeing so much growth from FPX this year because I don't wanna I don't wanna sell the wrong story. I don't wanna tell people that like, Sell it me all the same. What's the right story to sell? Yeah, it, it, I don't want to say like FBX came in as a favorite this split or, or have been playing this well the entire time. That's not the case. They have evolved over the course of this split. And Milky Way joining the roster is absolutely a part of that. And it feels like he's very much a leader within this team. And I do, I, I would love to see more behind the scenes from this team. I'd love to see what the conversations are like behind the scenes, whether it's the coaching staff getting involved in these conversations as well. Because you've got to remember that their head coach is, is Sin, who, you know, won the LCK on King's Own Dragon X back in 2018, you know, went to MSI uh, as a part of that squad as well. He was in RNG in 2016 as well, coming second place in summer. Like, this is a, a coach with a lot of experience, He's been a part of some legendary rosters. I'd love to see how much impact he's having, whether it is the Milky Way performance here, like <laughs> through and through. I'd love to hear more from this team. Yeah, and I think on the other side of it too, um, I don't want to necessarily pin it all on one player despite Milky Way being the player that we focus on because this is a whole team understanding how to play their damn team composition. Absolutely. We have seen other teams in the LPL have individual great players but not be able to stick things out because they actually don't understand how to play the entirety of their team composition. In fact, that's been a bit of a concerning issue with the LPL so far. Good players, but actually sometimes these teams are zeroing in on the imprecisions which they're currently suffering from. NIP arguably are one of those teams. We've seen some great moments out of them, but these players, we know they have more to give. We hold these teams to high expectations because we know exactly what they can do. And in this game, it feels like they've been uh, left a little bit wanting. It'll be a good review game for them. I think that um, looking at how to play this game from draft, it was always going to be a difficult one. They needed an early lead. They've not necessarily got to that. This game's obviously not over. It's a significant gold deficit, though, and that's going to make these team fights really, really quite hard to play. Yeah, you know it's uh, not going well when Nymeera's best way of finding <laughs> silver lining is, this would be a good one to review. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's not a good statement to hear uh, <laughs> as the play-by-play -play here that's hoping like for some think bag of team like, fights. I like, I think if it's like the, the parent-teacher evening where we sat there's like, so, an IP, here's your report card. Now, we know this series versus the FTX didn't really go so well, but we think it'd be really good for you to review. So let's use this as a learning opportunity, a way to build into the next series. <laughs> Yeah, tough one here for NIP, that is for sure. And they they might be grounded after this one. I don't know if Mum's going to let them uh, play on the PlayStation later. Oh, they're going to take away the Xbox. Oh, terrible. Nightmare, nightmare. Um, but I will say, like, 
I don't think the it's FPX particularly box, yeah. an in <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, I don't think it's a particularly like individual issue either. I don't think it's like one player on NIP massively underperforming, like in a way that you can just place blame. Like there's a lot of rosters when they underperform across the world where one player seems to take the brunt of the blame from the fan base and often unfairly, but a lot of the times you can kind of see where people are coming from. In this roster, I don't feel like there is one player specifically that's like dramatically underperforming the rest of the team are, are trying their best. Like, I feel like this is a, a roster-wide issue for NIP, and that's a problem. Yeah, because every single member of this NIP roster has had some really good games. Guys, they're 7-1 and one in series. I don't want to oversell the fact that they're struggling as well. They've walked away with series wins. They've struggled through a lot of them short, but even then, they've had I some see, great moments. Do you know what? I disagree with that. Yeah? Because like, the thing is, yes, they are 7-1, and one, but there's mm. a million teams that have been 7-1 and one in the LPL that when it comes down to playoffs, they've just immediately okay, lost the play. best of five, fallen out before they even get to the gauntlet stage of things. And it's like, you know, yes, sure, NIP, you're 7-1, great stuff. And I'm happy for you. And I hope this is a team that I want to succeed. I love Rookie. I love Fotic. I love this team, right? I would love to see them succeed. However, this kind of play is not good enough when it comes to playoffs. And if they don't fix it, like, it doesn't matter that you went 7-1. If you just lose this gauntlet, or even if you win the gauntlet, if you're still playing this messy, like, I don't want a team that's playing messy to do well in the LPL yeah. because we've got to go to MSI and we've got to take on the Korean teams. We need our teams to be in damn good shape. And right now, NIP is not that team. You know what? That's fair. You know what? I'll take that. That's absolutely fine. Now, NIP, we have to hold them to high standards. We just talked about it with the LPL and we talked about the region having some issues this year so far. Now, it is a region which, of course, sometimes uh, has to figure out how to play on the new season and it takes a little while. Luckily, we have a lot of season, a lot of series to figure that out. We are, however, halfway through our regular split. And things are starting to come to the breaking point sooner rather than later, just like in this game. Could be a bit of a breaking point around this next dragon that's spawning up in the next minute. FPX, um, great way to tell how they're doing in the game right now is look at all the wards which they have on the enemy side of the map. There is not a single NIP ward in even the river. That's such a hard thing to maintain. Even in losing games, you can see teams get a single ward just into the river, into one of those bushes. Yeah. NIP, they don't have information to play anything with right now. And speaking of, as you're saying that, Aki finds a window to sneak a ward into the Baron pit because he's so <laughs> nervous about the lack of vision that they have right now. FPX, though, playing towards this Drake that will be spawning shortly. 15 seconds on that one, or maybe 10 seconds at this point. And it would be their second on the trot if they can grab that for themselves. NIP potentially could try and threaten a race on Baron if they commit too many members down to the bottom side, but I don't think FPX are going to fall for that. No, I don't think so either. I think the big bonus that FPX have right now is that um, they can just send a lot of members into different places and have some really long-range um, response timings because they have the Ornal, instant response pretty much from one lane to the adjacent lane as well. You have the center ult, similar with the global ult too. The Graves ult even can be a big factor in a lot of these plays. NIP, it's not even like they can find someone truly isolated because of the range of FPX's composition. The more I think about it, I really like what they put together. They've managed to put together a very um, difficult draft for NIP to play, play against. They get out team fort, they don't have side lane advantage, they don't have scaling advantage because they're outranged by stuff like the Senna and their front line is weaker than the Castanse and the Orn too. NIP are pretty much outclassed at every level, it feels like. It feels like they're playing like, um, you know, it's like FPX's team comp, but a light version. It's, it's the diet version <laughs> of it. It's not the full fat Coke. As it feels like this team needed the early advantage or to play some smoke and mirrors. Cat might just get caught out by those smoke and mirrors. Speaking of, yeah, speaking of both smoke and mirrors. Oh no, they actually get a double pop awesome. And Rookie's caught by the root as well. In comes Live to try and finish the job with the brittle prox. And in the meantime, Dr. And Milky Way keeping the rest of the team busy. How the hell are NIP losing the pick onto care that they started? Shockwave onto Dr. But the sustain comes through and he flashes the arrow. It's two kills for FBX and is gone from bad to worse for NIP. Oh god, it's all about the geography. Rookie gets hit by the low ground, high ground. He doesn't think he's in the Nico up, but he gets caught anyway. And that's the start of the bad news in that team fight for the ninjas in pajamas. FPX, we thought maybe Care could get caught out, get caught out by the smoke and mirrors play of NIP, but it just isn't to be. The response timing so quick from FPX. Chuo, great position, gets himself into a point where he can maybe force a play. But look at this, Rookie thinks he's just out of that hitbox, but just about caught on the edge of it. 
and that starts things off for a really, really bad retreat from them. They're outranged, they're out movement speeded, honestly. Senna, very fast champion. Every time she hits you, she gets to keep speeding up and slowing you down. Such an annoying champion, despite the fact that she gets caught by the Shockwave. The gold just isn't quite there from Rookie to even finish that kill. Very awkward moment. Wow. What a game. And also, I just want to quickly shout out, like, this has been the Milky Way show for a lot of FPX's wins. Shalai, who having crazy side lane performances where he goes 0 and 7, but still somehow influences the game. But Doctor is really my MVP this game. 100% kill participation, yeah. the early roams on the center, his, his soul stacking, actually not that inspirational right now in terms of the number. He's getting close to the 100. It's sort of maybe ever so slightly behind your average number, but it's reasonable. But it's, it's where he's been on the map. It's the way he's positioning in these fights, getting damage down, like the flash against the arrow in that final fight as well, so he doesn't go down to Fotic. He has been everywhere he needs to be, and the sustain and the pressure he's bringing to these fights, it's fantastic to see. And with that Senna being so hard to reach in the back line. <laughs> Okay. Harass at this point. <laughs> right. Fair play. I guess he's level 16 and he goes, yeah, yeah, let's see how much damage this does. Throws it out. And gets himself a bird shot into the target he's looking for. Shalahu in a 1v3. Uh, we've seen this before. Yeah, in the meantime, he's just got to try and buy as much time as physically possible. He's still got over a thousand HP to work with right here. All out. No of way. Ball. No, it only goes a quarter of the... Oh, th that was an unfortunate all-out. Doesn't take him across the wall. In the meantime, though, Rookie's been caught underneath the tower. The horn horn sounded, and that might just be the sound required to signal the end of the game for FPX. They look towards those Nexus Towers, but instead, they just move mid. <laughs> they don't need minions when the tower's that low. And FPX walk away with two inhibitors traded for Shalahu's life. Rookie dies in the top side as well, which is uh, an important moment for NIP to kind of... Uh not be able to fight back. Which one are we going to focus on? Oh, we're going to focus on the kill on top side as well. Miss this one. Uh, again, what do you do around this long range engage? You took away the Maokai from the first game, but realistically, the Orn can do even better long range engage for singular picks because how quick that ult comes in, as opposed to how slow Maokai's ult is on the other way. Milky Way, so much goddamn damage. He's built up a hubris in his infantry. The, I'm not going to call it the AD Magi's, but it's pretty close. And he's absolutely feeling it, and he has every right to. His whole team is setting him up for success. It's uh, sort of the, the sword of a sword of the but, occult 2.0. Oh, and there we go. The these, statues, these are the Huber statues. The statues yeah. Statues on the walls. I thought they'd got rid of them completely because they used to be in the fountain. Yeah. I thought that they'd been removed entirely, but no. Statues I there at the base. Did, did you um, did you see on PBE when they first released that item? I spent a lot of time figuring out the new items on it. There was a really funny bug with Hubris where if you got too many kills, like the statues would just like overflow the base. <laughs> there were just way too many of them. It was like uh, you walk into a Renaissance where, uh, gallery. When it was first coming out, I saw a bug where they were like following people around. So <laughs> you had like a posse. Uh, I don't think that bug lasted very long. So here we go, root in from Dwob, looking for the play, but the Zonius by so much time for Gary Foster oh! Ford for a triple pop blossom, and that is collateral damage, not just in name of ability, but in meaning as well. Everybody eradicated, NIP torn asunder as Milky Way will grab himself a quadra kill. He'll probably grab himself an MVP again, let's be honest. Rookie of the week, three times already, and he wants a fall here. NIP have been called out as FBX begin their gauntlet run, and they are on fire. FBX. Back to back, take down Top Esports and the Ninjas in pajamas. These teams are no slouches. FPX are a team which we thought would be struggling this split. This was a team we thought would be building. They've already built up better than half the teams in the LPL. They walk away with a good 2-0. I love the team compositions they brought out. I love the way that they played two very different styles. The first game, it felt like, yes, they still had a lot of team fight components with the Senna Maokai, but there was the side lane and the macro which felt much cleaner than NIP were really prepared for. In this game, it was a different composition with so much overwhelming range and snap engage potential, which NIP were just not up to the pace of. They are a team which has had to slow down. They've had to wait for their moment. FPX did not give them any window of time to wait for that. Oh, they absolutely didn't. And I just love like, literally from the first minute of the game, as soon as the minions 